Hey guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank. In this video, I'm going to do a follow-up, a part two, if you will, of a video that I did previously explaining how to do bitwise operations in C++. Right. So in that video, we talked about bitwise and, bitwise or, bit shifting, and all that kind of stuff. And I'll leave in the comments below a um, link to that video so you can go back and review it if you happen to get here before you get a chance to see that one. Okay, so let's go ahead and dig into it. And what I wanted to uh, add on, you could think of it as a part two as an addendum, I guess you could say, is um, bit fields. Talk about bit fields. And so C++ will allow you to create your own data structures where you can have bits as individual variables. Okay, so we can take this idea of you know bits or, or or data at the bit level and combine that with a struct or a structure. Okay, As a matter of fact, you have to. That's that's the syntactical requirement. And so, what you can do is you can specify inside of a struct, you know, how many fields you want and how many bits you want each individual field to to uh, take up. So you might have maybe you want to construct a nibble. Right, so what's a nibble? It's half a byte. Nibble's got four bits. Okay, maybe you want to create your own data type that's four bits long. Well, we can do that with this idea of bit fields and using structs. Okay, but you could also set it up to where you've got uh, maybe um, a structure that has four fields, but one of the fields takes up two bits. Right, another one takes up three. So you, maybe another one takes up just one within that data type. And so in that way, you can break down how you're going to store data within that data type in a more granular fashion. Okay. So let me go ahead and give you an example of what I'm talking about. Okay. So we'll create, let me go ahead and switch over here to Visual Studio. All right. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create a, um, a structure. And we'll put four fields in there and we'll specify that each field is going to take up one byte each. And so between the four fields, that'll be, or not one byte, so excuse me, one bit. So between those four fields, we'll have four bits, four bits. Okay. Now the um, overall size of the structure is going to depend upon what data type you're going to make the individual fields, right? So I'm going to make them uh, individual. I'm going to make them bools. So that way the entire structure will require very little memory. All right. So let's go ahead and start typing some code here. So I'll make a struct, which I'll call a nibble. Okay. And then I'm going to have four fields in here and I'm going to make them all Booleans. All right. So to do that, I'm going to use a type def uh, bool and I'm going to call it fields or I'm going to call it field, right? Just because it feels like it feels more, more, more natural. Type def uh, bool field. Okay. So by doing that, oops, it would be useful if I actually spelled that right, wouldn't it? Type def bool field. So in here, I'm going to say, okay, well, this is going to be field, right? Field one. Okay. Now the syntax requires us to put a colon. And then after that colon, specify how many bits you want that first field to take up. Now I want exactly four bits. So I'm going to have four fields that are going to be one bit each. But if I wanted that first field to occupy two bits, I could do that. But I want one um, bit each. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So I now have a data type that's a nibble that has four bits. Now let's go ahead and show you how much memory the overall structure takes up. So a size of a nibble. All right, now I only need four bits for this new data type that I created. So since I use bool, I don't need any more than that. And what's a bool? Bool's one byte. So the low four bits will be used to create my nibble. The other um, four bits unused in the bool, okay? The, of, that, of that byte, unused, don't need them, okay? Now let's go ahead and create for ourselves. Let's do some interesting things here. So let's create a nibble and I'll call it N. 
and I'll initialize it to zero. Okay. Now, if I want to set individual fields or individual bits within uh, the nibble, I could say n dot field uh, one equals zero or one, right? And that's going to set that bit to either zero or one. Okay. So um, I could do something like oh, like this. I could say n dot field one uh, is equal to one and dot field two is equal to zero and dot field three is equal to one and and dot field four is equal to one so the bit pattern in that one byte would be something like this zero 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 one zero one one right we're only using those four low bits okay so in this way i'm storing what uh eight nine ten eleven okay now let's do something maybe a little bit more interesting and let's overload the um, stream insertion operator okay so we'll do something like this operator equals and or not operator equals sorry operator we're going to do operator equals here in just a second and we're going to pass to this thing um, the o stream reference and then a nibble okay a constant nibble so uh, const nibble reference uh, n. Okay, so now what I'll do in here is I'll just simply uh, put into the stream uh, each one of these fields. Okay, but uh, each one of those fields is going to have one or zero assigned to it. So I could just do something like n dot field one, uh, n dot field two, n dot field three, n dot field four. Okay. And then we'll return O. So now, um, or not O, or not zero, O. Do, 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 there we go. So now I could just see out my nibble. Okay, let's just test that. Shouldn't be too exciting. It should just be assigned to zero, right? So there's the contents of my nibble, zero, 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 zero. Now, if I wanted to uh, initialize it. I could maybe do something like this one zero one zero okay and then that one will go to the first field the zero will go to the second field and so on and then if I go ahead and run it you can see there's the bit pattern there. Now if I wanted to not look all awkward like this then I'd have to do something with the initializer here but um, keep the video short I'll leave that as an exercise but what I will do is I'll show you an example of how it could work. What if I wanted to do something like this? What if I wanted to um, assign to my nibble a particular bit pattern using an assignment statement? Um, and I could do this with the initializer or set up a constructor for the, the struct as well, but I'll just do an overloaded assignment operator and then you'll get the idea, okay? So what if I want to do something like this, 1101, right? Let's assign it, the bit pattern like that, or you know, we knew that that is equal to, um, what, 13, right? Because there's an 8, there's a 4, and then there's a 1, right? So that's that's equivalent to 13 in base 10. Well, what if I wanted to just assign a 13, then have it automatically translate? Okay, well, to do that, I have to overload this assignment operator here. And so I'm going to do that. Okay, so we're going to return a nibble reference. Operator equals, and then we're going to pass as an argument an integer. Okay, we're not assigning one nibble to another. We're going to assign an integer to this. Okay, and then that integer is going to, we're going to tear that integer apart using bitwise operations and then flip each one of these bits in the fields, right? Set each one of these fields. So here's how we're going to do it. Okay, so what we'll do is is uh, we'll go ahead and check to see if the number that they entered is greater than or equal to zero and uh, less than or equal to 15, right? Because if you only have four bits, those are only four, or that's the only range of values that is permissible, right? If you have four bits, you can go from zero through 15, okay? So zero, 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 zero through one, 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 one. So zero through 15 is all we got, okay? so. If that's the case, then what we'll do 
is we'll just use those bitwise operations that we saw in the previous video. So in this case, bitwise and, and we'll end that with eight, right? Why? Because eight corresponds to the bit pattern for that leading bit. Now remember, and and end, you know, or new one and one, when you're ending to two bits, right? One and one is one. So if I'm past 15, okay, then that bit pattern for 15 is one, 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 one. So what we'll get out of the result of this right here is we'll get one, which is true, right? So we'll be able to assign that to this field right here, okay? So let's do it. Okay, so we're gonna say field uh, one is equal to field one and, uh, and eight, okay? And that actually should be in, right? Because what we're doing is we're ending the number that was passed, okay? So we'll and that. So in this case, if we pass it 13, okay, we're ending 13 and eight. Well, what's 13? That's the eighth place. That's the fourth place, the twos and the ones. So eight is again, one, zero, zero, zero. So when we end this, this is gonna, when we end these two numbers, this is gonna evaluate to one, which we will assign to field one, okay? And we'll do a similar thing for the fours place, for the twos place, and for the ones place, okay? Field three. So, I mean, it was just kind of, I saw this and I was just kind of like, oh, this is cool. This, this seems like it'd be a great follow-up for, you know, our previous discussion of stupid bit tricks, right? So now, if I assign uh, 13 to N, and 13 should be the bit pattern 8, 4, 0, 1, right? So, it should be an 8, a 4, and a 1. 8 plus 4 plus 1 is 13. 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. So one in the eighth place, one in the fourth place, and then one in the ones place. So let's see if that works. Okay. We will try it out. Oh, I got a bill there. What am I, what am I, what did I miss here? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I forgot to return. I forgot to return value in my uh, overloaded operator here. So we're going to return this. Okay. Let's try it again. Okay, so there you go. You can see there's the one, one, zero, one, right? So we got it. It's right there, right? Right there. So cool. Let's uh, test all of them though. Okay, let's uh, build ourselves a little loop here. That's what we'll do. We'll test every single one. Okay, so four. Uh, int i equals zero, i less than or equal to 15, i plus plus, and uh, that's what we will do. We'll um, assign uh, to n i each time, right? So we'll assign to that nibble zero on the first pass, and then on the second pass, we'll assign it one, and on the third pass, we'll assign it two, and on the fourth, and so on. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and we'll see out uh, i, and then we'll do a little bit of a tab there, and then we'll do our n. Okay, and let's see if it uh, prints out all of the bit patterns of our nibbles, right? Because remember, we're assigning to this nibble 0 through 15, okay? And the bit pattern 0 through 15. So let's see what we got. Okay, so 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. Three, two, and one, four, four, five is uh, four and one, six is four and two, seven is four, two, one, eight is one, right? Nine is one and one, or is a, it, that's the eighth place, right? Eight and one. Ten is eight in the two, eleven is eight, two, one, twelve is eight and four, thirteen is eight, four and one, fourteen is uh, eight, four and two, and then fifteen is eight, four, two, one. Yeah, so success, right? So, okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, well, there's that thumbs down as well. Consider 
supporting the channel in different ways, leave a comment. Uh, subscribe, subscribe's great. Membership with perks for as little as 99 cents a month. Uh, and as always, if you're a student of mine, please feel free to shoot me an email, stop by my office hours, hit me up on Zoom. And um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.